Carl and Lou here from Games, Brains and Head Bang Life, GBHBuild.com for sure. And it's the nasties where we look at another video nasty. This one being don't go in the house. There are a lot of don't do things <laughs> yeah. in the nasties list. <laughs> and this is one of them. We've done, have we done a don't go before? Don't go in the basement? I think we've done that one. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a lot of them. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't go out. <laughs> get, get, gets very, very confusing. But this film was released in 1980. Written and directed by Joseph Ellison and co-written by Ellen Hamill and Joe Mace Field. Released with three minutes and seven seconds cut in 1987. Mm. So it was butchered back then. Yeah. But was passed on cut as of December 2011. The movie was not prosecuted. It mm. is one of the unprosecuted 72. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you watch it and when you know what's been cut out as well, what's been cut out is very, very tame yeah. by today's standards. And one of the sort of controversial aspects is almost laughable mm. by today's standards. But we'll get to... Yeah. What that? Well, we'll talk about it now. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the cut is the graphic the, 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 the dra graphic depiction mm -hmm. of the death of Collier's first victim. So the very first victim he kills is a woman and he burns her. Mm -hmm. And there's quite up close of her burning body. Yep. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. But that was the major issue yeah. there. But the central theme of childhood abuse mm -hmm. is what caused this film to be controversial. Yeah. And that's like, really? <laughs> Mm. That's controversial. Yeah, because we've seen. It's weird because obviously, like you know, it's focusing on a man and mm. his abuse, and sometimes you get it more tends to be more with focus on the female, female abuse and things like that. But yeah, it's strange that 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 sort of this sort of story would be commonplace mm. in not even in horror yeah. in dramas and stuff like yeah. that. Many many years later, the yeah. fact that when you think oh a story about childhood abuse, which is you straight away like, well, that's quite intriguing for a video nasty. That mm -hmm. seems like quite a, a story to be telling. Do you think it's because they were trying to, maybe trying to garner a bit of sympathy for him? And like, they didn't like the confusion of... Possibly. They didn't want the confusion of, oh, here's a character, but look what he's been through. To so, kind of like, mm -hmm. make you think about it a bit more. And the, the board of film didn't like that. They didn't want, they want it to be clear cut. These people are monsters. There's not an ounce of sympathy for these guys. So I mean, the, that little blur in the line, they didn't like as much. I, I like it. Mm. I don't know if that's true, but it's certainly a, an interesting theory. Mm. Absolutely. Cast. Uh, Dan Grimaldi as Donald Donny Collier. Disco Donny. Yeah, Disco Donny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Colin McInnes as young Donald Collier. Mm. Uh, Robert Ost as Bobby Tuttle. Joanna Brache as Kathy Jordan. Ruth Dadrick as Mrs. Collier. Mm. And Ralph D. Bowman as Father Geraghty. Mm. Now, let's... To talk about the obvious thing yeah. first. This is ripping off a famous horror movie more than anything else. It is ripping oh, off Psycho. Yeah, yeah, it is. The mother link. The, this, the mother link. The fact that he hears, you know, thinks his mother's still alive when mm. she's dead. The abuse and stuff like yeah. that and turning him crazy. It's different than mm. Psycho. Of course it is. But it is without a shadow of a doubt looking at that and going, yeah, we're going to use something. I mean, even the building, even the, like the, the, it's not a motel. But it looks like a motel. Yeah. It's a big house. We said, you know? it was, we said it probably was filmed in a hotel that was being due for being renovated. Yeah, because there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of areas that looks like works going on. Mm. Like walls are being painted or stripped yeah. and stuff like that. And we did look online and it, I think it's like a, it's an old museum or something. And people actually go to and visit it, visit the actual place. So it is kind of used for that. Okay, mm. okay. And we begin. Donald Cole, he is obsessed with fire. Mm -hmm. And we see a flashback. Throughout the movie, we see flashbacks that, or, or, that originate where his obsession comes from. Mm -hmm. When he was young, his mum used to abuse him um, by basically holding his bare arms over a gas stove mm -hmm. to burn the evil out of him. Yeah. We never really see anything beyond that. We just see that same scene mm -hmm. over and over again, which is his arms being held out over the yeah. gas, gas stove. And like, mum had different boyfriends as well, didn't she? And all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Just... Yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't go too far in depth, which is why when you said at the beginning, that was one of the reasons. Mm. It wasn't loads of it. Maybe it's just because that impact, the impactfulness of kid showing a kid like that was the main part of it. Yeah, but, nor yeah. do we, nor do we really get an explanation or a story relating to as to why she so thinks he's evil or stuff like that. Mm. You know, like is that like she catch him masturbating stuff like that? Mm. Things like that you normally get. And why are you still living with her mm. as well? Kind of like well, why is he still a mama's boy? Like yeah, but I mean that 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 that's the psycho link there. That's the yeah. sort of thing there where it's kind of like mother can do no wrong, you know, okay, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. But of course she dies, um, mm. in quite a sad sort of scene. I think mm. you know there is some sympathy for Donny. Yeah. I do 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 feel that. Mm. It's just obviously you know his actions 
don't warrant quite, yeah. you know, this, you know. But um, he finds his mother dead, and basically after that, he becomes a sort of, I don't know, Avenger, where mm. anyone that kind of sort of reminds her, reminds her of him, uh, like reminds them of his mother. Yeah. He tends to kill in fiery ways. Yeah. So it's a beekeeper's outfit that he ends up kind of picking up, picks up like a surplus store. Mm. The suit is, it's a beekeeper's outfit. It's like, and I'm not really sure how that's, it's like it's designed to be like a, look like it's going to be like a flame, flame retardant. retardant thing. But would it be? I thought he stole it from work. I thought that was his work one. No, no, no. It will be, ah, yeah. But it's there he also runs into a florist named Kathy Jordan, played by Joanna mm. uh, Broche. And it's this is where it's like he wants to buy flowers for his dead mother. Um, you know, he's trying to talk Kathy. She wants to close and she's yeah. kind of talk around. And he does it with a fair amount of confidence. She ends up letting him buy the flowers because they're for his mother. He says yeah. she's ill at home. And then, you know, she closes up. She locks up and goes, like, starts walking home. But she misses the bus. Mm. So Donnie's in his car and he's like, look, I'll give you a lift home. She gets harassed by some men as well. Like yeah. some, some youths on the street yeah. giving it all. Like, and so she, he offers her a ride home. But on the way there, he says, look, I've got to stop at my house, check on my yeah. mother. Won't take long, you know. She's not keen on that, is she? But she's, she's not keen on it. But we didn't love, I mean, it's hard, isn't it? Because we're looking at it from a modern standpoint mm. where it's like you shouldn't be in that car. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's 1980. Mm. I mean, it's probably some pretty, by now, some pretty well publicised horrific murderers that have been brought to light. Yeah. By 1980. Um but yeah, he's quite aff- he's quite affable enough. He seems yeah. quite harmless, and at that point, she's one up her opportunities, and she's quite direct of like, oh, only for a minute, and I'll yep. call a cab, and like, she goes, yeah, that's she when she kept saying, I'll call a cab. That's when she goes chill. inside, yeah, yeah, because yeah, of course she goes inside, mm. and he's like, look, meet my mum, meet my mum, and all that kind of mm. thing. But you know, she he goes upstairs, she's kind of wandering around for a bit, and then wants to use the phone to call the cab. Yeah. But this is where she gets knocked unconscious and then wakes up in like a, a steel room that Donnie's kind of built. Yeah. Like with steel panels and stuff like that, I guess for fire retardant, yeah. that kind of thing. She's naked and chained to the ceiling. He arrives in his fireproof suit and uh, pours gasoline all over her yeah. and starts up his flamethrower, setting her a burn, mm. which is, of course, the, the cut. cut controversial particularly moment. It's the only really controversial scene in the movie. There's, mm. there's a couple of bits later on, but certainly nothing... Nothing or nothing that would warrant compared to some of the nasties that yeah. we've watched already. Yeah, some of that the, the extreme side of things and like the lingering up close. Mm. This is all just a bit, bit tame. Tame. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't get lots of scenes. Like it's a lot of scenes in and around the house, particularly mm. with this corpse of Kathy and some other women that he also sets on fire. He basically has created a little room upstairs mm. where his mother's charred corpse, who he also burned, and their corpses are sitting in chairs, and he acts mm. like they're alive. Yeah constantly talking to them and stuff like that. It's that they're laughing at him yes. and things like that. So that kind of a few scenes. I feel like some of these scenes are a little bit dragged down. Oh, yeah. Too many of them actually in the house and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But he's he seems to realise the what he's done. He's not so... He's not lost it. He's not insane, if that mm. makes sense. To the degree where he doesn't realise what he's done because he ends up feeling guilty and going to a church where he talks to Father Jerity. And this is where he reveals to the father about the abuse his mother inflicted yeah. upon him and about the urge that he has to kill. Mm. Uh, father Garrity persuades Donnie to try and move on with his life and leave the past. It's not the best advice that you give no. a person who says that sort of thing. Just basically move on. Yeah, you'd be fine. Forget about her. I feel stressed. You know? Don't yeah. feel stressed. <laughs> Don't feel stressed, <laughs> but I am stressed. Yeah. In an attempt to stop killing, Donnie ends up accepting an invitation via his friend Bobby to go on a double, double, a uh, double, double date. Double date. So Bobby, mm, Bobby he's, is he's an interesting character. Uh, I really liked him. I really liked his um, his 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 contrast in the film. He's quite energetic. He's quite bouncy. And here's a really weird thing, right? So Bobby's introduced at the very start of the film. At he works with Donnie. Mm. And at the very start of the film, there's a scene where uh, where Donnie's workmate gets set on fire after an accident. Donnie just watches and doesn't help. And the rest of his his workmates and boss shout at him. Yeah. Bobby kind of sticks up for him. Yeah. We were generally expecting and waiting for Bobby to, to have an ulterior motive. Yeah. We were waiting for it constantly. Yeah. Never actually yeah. comes. It seems like he just likes Donnie and wants to help him come out of his shell. Yeah. We do, we do see a bit... There is a scene where Bobby wants to take him out disco dancing. Mm. And then... It, he mentions all his two girls. It's like, oh, Bobby. Yeah, because Bobby's got a wife and two kids yeah. at home. Yeah, 
So that's only disappointment. You're like, oh, okay, Bobby seems a stand-up guy. And he's like, oh, you want a wingman who go like cheating. Yeah, yeah, it's the one where you're like, damn it, Bobby, yeah. we were doing so, so well. But you know, Donny, he go, he's, yeah, he's, he's, gonna, I'm going to go on this date. We do get, as I said, talk about filler scenes where he goes to buy the clothing. Oh, yeah, some cool shirts, man. It's a lot of, it actually yeah. is a lot of fun. We will say the actor that plays Donny is actually really, really he's good. good. He's one of the highlights of this film. Yeah. He is quite good. And I really, his, his awkwardness and his, the fact that his mother always bought his clothes for him. So he's having to go out shopping for the first time. Yeah. And he's got this guy that's like going to dress him and his clothes. It's really fucking, it's a good scene. Mm. There was quite a funny scene at a Van der Hosen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course. But yeah, he looks pretty sharp in his suit, though. Yeah. He goes disco dancing. And it's quite a fun scene with all disco dancing going on. Yeah, yeah, it's like that it. proper, it's like, proper that club. kind of sort of stuff, you yeah. know? Yeah, because in the club and all that, he ends up meeting the girl he's mm. supposed to hang out with. She's very forward, as you can imagine, quite yeah. confident and all that. And Donnie is really, really shy. Mm. Um, you know, I do, I've, I've sympathy for him in these mm. scenes because it's like, uh, it's going to be really crazy difficult for him. And it's, mm. this isn't just like, Going out on like a, a to a pub and just sitting and have a drink and then talking to someone. This is thrown in the deep end. With confident women, women yeah. uh, very confident women, forward, wanting to dance. You know, let's get on this dance floor. There's another guy, her brother, mm. who's again quite suspicious of Donnie. Like, oh, what you got chatting with my sister, kind of thing. Yeah. It's a lot for Donnie to kind of take in. You know? Yeah. So it all comes to a point where he. It's a really well done, cleverly yeah. done, isn't it? So it's like it's like a sort of like a mezzanine level where all the tra- t- chairs and tables are, mm. where Donnie's sitting, and the girls on the dance floor. She's like, "Come dance," and she tries to pull his arms, but obviously back in the eighties, you know, open unlit candles they had like a little tea light on. Yeah. And as she's pulling his arms, they go over over it. the flame, and he has flashbacks to his mum doing the same thing, and it's quite a well done. They're very taking scene, well done scene, and he ends up panicking and just. That's smashing the tea light into her head. Yeah. So we're like, oh, it's going so well. And then, yeah. Yeah, he smashes in the head with, with the, the candle holder kind of thing. Yeah. Her hair goes on fire. Mm. And obviously that causes chaos. Uh, Donnie runs, he flees away from the disco. Yeah. He's chased for a bit, um, gets beaten up a little bit by her brother, mm. manages to get into his car and drives away. Mm. Seemingly furious and just like, obviously we're accepting that or I'm never going to be able to live a normal life. He runs into two drunken girls in the street and uh, them being drunk together as well they basically happily get in the car with him mm. and he takes them to the house basically mm. um bobby fearing weirdly enough worried about donnie in yeah. this scene more than anything else mm. goes to father garrity uh, on his way and they both go to donnie's donnie's house mm. there they no one answers the front door so they're breaking in and end up hearing the women screaming yeah. and rescue them from the flame room Donnie then just goes full on attack mode here. He ends up setting Father Garrity ablaze with a flamethrower. Bobby does put him out, thankfully. Yeah. So, the, you know, damn it, Bobby, if that wasn't an early scene, you'd be the no. hero of this fucking yeah. movie. Donnie, you know, realizing the jig is up, takes refuge in his mother's bedroom. And the voice, he hears voices this mm-hmm. time expressing a disappointment in him. Yeah. And from this is where it gets weird. From his perspective and our perspective, the burned corpses come to life mm. and start to enclose in him. Yeah. This is a bit of a weird one. Yeah. Mm, it kind of confused the narrative where it's like, wait, is this in his head? It could still be. I, I, I it know, could still be. But... Yeah, a lot of films do that. Don't mm. they? They, they make you guess all the way to the end and then you come away going, I'm sure, I think it was just hallucinating. And by that point, it's probably a bit of an inhalation of smoke and stuff like that. So I feel, I feel like it was. I think to nail that aspect, mm. you know what you do? You have a quick second cut Perhaps when advancing, there's a quick second cut for us of them still sitting there. Yeah. So you're like, okay, this isn't Donnie's head because yeah. the house is going up in flames around him. And that's how it ends. The house mm-hmm. going up in flames, presume Donnie is dead amongst the corpses, yeah. never going to be seen again. And then we get a final scene that's odd mm. and confuses it even more in regards to, is there something more supernatural going on yeah. here? And we see a young boy named Michael watching the news report about Donnie's death. Mm. His mother scolds him and slaps him from not turning off the TV as she asks him to. And when she leaves the room, Michael hears the voices that Donnie heard. Yeah. And they tell him that they've come to help him. Yeah. And that's where the film ends. And you're like, wait, what? Yeah, because we looked at it in two ways. We thought it was... Um, I thought of... this was a psychological horror. Yeah, so it's more like the reference of like, just... To, just cycle of violence and abuse continues mm-hmm. and this is what happened to this boy that's what that's what we kind of looked at as is like that i want you know. that's what i want it to be mm. i don't want the fact that like we're here to like like as if they've 
as if it's some sort of supernatural entity that has now moved on to help yeah. you know it confuses things really unnecessarily yeah. so do you not think I, I think i think it does i feel like maybe not having if it was the voice maybe that voice is more uh personal to the little boy i don't mm. know how you would portray that in just a short scene but yeah it did make us think more than usual when it's nasty so i appreciated it for that like it is when I mean, you do look at like murders and case like that it tends to be a lot of more abuse leading into that which i appreciated but yeah it kind of and the fact that that we worked out the boy was the son of bobby yeah we thought it was bobby's son yeah so would it, it passed on it kind of came back with came back with bobby but yeah it wasn't clear enough. see that gets stuck on the supernatural aspect mm, more than anything yeah. else and if it is that then the film did a terrible job of portraying mm. that aspect it really did if it is if that's what the focus is supernatural elements yeah. that took that you know encouraged um Donnie, and now we've done to them. The film did a terrible job expressing yeah. that. It really, really did. Yeah. But likewise, it kind of trips up the psychological horror by including this question mark about mm. that aspect. When had it just ended, had it in this final scene not even been included, yeah. it wouldn't have made any difference to the overall yeah. thing. Because then I could easily have been like, well, obviously the women, the burnt women advancing on Donnie in the finale mm. was in his head. Of course yeah. it was. And that's when the movie ended. And I'd have been like, you know what? That's, 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 a, that's cool secret psychological yeah. horror. And I wouldn't even thought twice about supernatural elements. This part made me go, huh? And that's not such a great thing. Yeah. However, the movie overall, aside from some slow scenes, yeah. slow scenes and repetitive yeah. elements, particularly when it's the women in the house, because it all amounts to the same thing. They run, they're screaming, they're hanging up, they get burned. Yeah. The, latter port, la the latter deaths are barely seen. Yeah. You get some whipping here and there, but you do not get a burnt corpse. They did it once. Yeah, but the rest of them just turn up there. So like, the rest okay. are just the aftermath. Yeah. And we will say the effects on the burnt corpses are bad. Mm. They look fake as shit. Yeah. So they're not even quality in that. So on a on a nasty scale, on a nasty, on a nasty perspective, this film isn't worth seeing. Yeah. If you're after particularly controversial shit. Yeah. The fact you can get it completely uncut now as a 2011 speaks volumes to that. Yeah. As a film, as a horror movie or drama, horror drama, mm. I think it does a very, very good job. It's yeah, solid acting. It. Yeah, and I say, like, you do feel there's a sympathy for him, like, mm -hmm. because, you know, the, the abuse has kind of left him scarred and stuff. Yep. But then, then it goes, when it progresses to, like, him smashing the glass, it's like, okay, I can't, I can't. Okay, fair enough, you've been abused, but you can't do that. No, being, you know. So it's, yeah, I, I, he's quite a layered character. I liked him. I love disco scenes. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it was. I think most of the scenes he's in is mm. pretty well done. Mm. Um, he, he, he's, he's. You said it. He's very affable. He comes mm. across very quiet, shy. Mm. Someone that would be very easy to take advantage of, which is why we suspected Bobby early on yeah. as being having ulterior motives, which you know he doesn't really. I know we've got that scene and all that, but listen, that scene aside, and li we're also making the presumptions that that Bobby is going out to cheat. Yeah. Doesn't mean he is. He just might not want to. Maybe his wife has a problem with him hanging out with this girl, and she's a friend, and he just wants to go dancing. You know. Yeah. I know, if we're gonna, we could make, we could make that jump if we wanted to. Yeah. But the reason why the jump is there and the possibility is because every other scene, Bobby is a good character. Yeah. Do you know? Oh yeah. So overall, I still think he's like he's he's, you know. I still think he's a good character. Yes, he is. Overall. Well it's acted just, as well. It was just more like a, oh, Bobby. It is, it's it is. Your wife and kids. But, but yeah. that shows the how well of a character he is. The fact that we even thought that. Yeah. And we're like, ah, oh, damn it, you know? Yeah. And I, I, a part of me was like, man, this could have been the first nasty that actually had a really happy, could have had an happy ending. And yeah. I would have been really happy with it. Because I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to see um, Donnie kind of get past of his abuse yeah. problems and have a happy life and all that kind of thing yeah. we know it's not going to happen no. it's a horror movie it's a video nasty but you know I wanted it to yeah. because he's a likeable character that's a rare event this is weird we're talking about a nasty where we are literally focusing on characters yeah. and the drama around the childhood abuse and what happened to him yeah. rather than the elements that make this series mm. the nasty part yeah you know, yeah. which is makes it, I think, a recommended watch. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Go go away from the stupid title. It doesn't really make sense. Don't go in the house. I mean, yeah, I know we got a house and you shouldn't yeah. go window and that kind of thing. But, you know, maybe it's don't go in. Don't go disco dancing with Donnie. Yeah. Um, you know, keep fire away from Donnie, that kind of thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it's certainly one of the, the better ones we've watched, particularly in a while. Definitely. Yeah. But, of course, you've seen it. Let us know what you think of it in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, 
Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there, that's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL, as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, and of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?